is we would see, okay, when would we get the most downloads on which days? Okay, well, we seem to get downloads on this time, so instead of actually coming out this time, let's come out early. So it's like in people's feeds as they're like hitting the cars going to work on the days our episodes come out. So it's like really cool. You can get that nerdy with it. Welcome to the Whistle Way Podcast. My name is Kyle Whistle, your host with Whistle Realty Group and EXP Realty in San Diego. I'm Tom Conyers, um, assistant media marketing dude. (laughs) So we had to mix it up a little bit this morning. Um, Brian is is out with a uh, illness and uh, (laughs) our guest for the day is one of my agents who uh, decided to tell us last minute he was running 20 minutes late. So we want to make sure we still deliver and get our episode out this week. So we said, you know what? Let's have Thomas be on this episode. And Thomas is usually the guy behind the camera, behind the switchboard. And uh, it's gonna be a fun topic today because we're gonna talk a little bit about podcasting since the person who produces our podcast is the guest today. So uh, if you've never tuned into our show before, uh, the way we like to run this is to answer the questions that you have for us. So if you have questions you wanna have answered on the show, you can always go to thewhistleway.com, thewhistleway.com. You can ask us questions, join our Facebook group, uh, subscribe to the podcast, YouTube channel, join our referral network, and get early bird pricing, which is uh, expiring very, very soon on our Media Mayor Mastermind course, which is everything that my uh, videographer and Thomas and all of us have put together over the last six years of cranking out videos condensed into a course, and it is 50% off right now. So go to Media Mayor, actually go to thewhistleway.com, and it'll link you over to the Media Mayor Mastermind course. So jump on that while it is 50% off. Uh, if you enjoy the show today, we really appreciate it. If you're watching on YouTube, hit the thumbs up button, um, hit the subscribe button and the little bell so you get notified of future episodes of the show. And if you are listening on one of the podcast platforms, if you could hook us up with a review on there, uh, that would mean the world to us. We'd love to add value to as many people as possible. And the more reviews we have, the more uh, the podcast platforms are going to show our show to people. So with that said, Thomas is here. And so we've been producing the podcast for how long now, Thomas? Uh, I feel like since I started, I was going to the radio station with you, and I was always cutting up our last segment and stuff like that to go on there, but I think officially almost two and a half years. Yeah, so we started out initially doing straight-up radio, going to a radio studio and shooting a radio show, and that was actually really good. Um, Got a ton of relationships out of it. There's a few different ways to use radio. Um, One way is to run ads, and there's definitely value around running radio ads. I would say if you're going to run radio ads, the way to really crush it with radio ads is to also run billboards in conjunction with it. Because what starts to happen as people are out and about on the roads, they're seeing your billboards, then they're tuning in on their radio, and they're hearing your radio ad. And now they put two and two together like, oh, that person in the commercial I just heard is that person that I see on the billboards everywhere that person's everywhere. That's the illusion that it creates and people want to work with the person that's everywhere because they feel if that person's everywhere, they're going to put my property everywhere. And if they put my property everywhere, it's going to sell for a lot of money. So uh, that's one way to go with the radio show. The alternative way, which is the way that we used it, was more of a relationship building thing where each week we would have a different guest on. We would bring on guests that one could add value because obviously if you have a show that doesn't add value, then nobody's going to listen to your show. And then two, we wanted guests that had the potential to refer business to us. Crazy concept, right? Like, isn't it nice to have business referred to you? I just got a referral from somebody through the radio show, uh, one of the biggest listings I've ever signed in my life, a three and a half million dollar listing. It was a referral from somebody I met through the radio show. So we would bring guests on like lenders, like divorce attorneys, bankruptcy attorneys, financial advisors, um, CPAs, accountants, bringing on all of these different types of business owners. And the show was great, right? We built tons and tons of relationships because what was cool is now we'd say, hey, you want to come on my radio show? Now they get to show up. They come in this really cool studio. Um, They get to be on the radio. We help publicize it, push it out there. They get to tell all their friends, like, hey, tune in. I'm going to be on the radio tonight. Um, It was cool. So we, we ran that for four or five years probably, you uh, popped in for probably the latter two years maybe, latter year of it. And so one of the other things we started to do with that radio show was that we would then uh, record the show, 
one, it would go on Facebook Live in the moment. So we would live stream the show. So we're reaching that audience. So it's not just living on the airwaves of radio. It's also living in social media world. Um, in addition to that, we would record it. Then we would take the audio from the show and upload it to podcast platforms. Yep. And that's what Thomas would do for us. So when Thomas joined the team, he came in and, and started being the guy behind the scenes who was making all of that stuff happen. All so podcasts. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about some of the technology that you were using then, and then we'll, we'll dive into how we've transitioned since radio. But let's start with radio. So when we were solely shooting radio, mm-hmm. how are we getting it onto Facebook Live? And then how are we getting the audio and where were we putting it? I think that's what people would love to know is, one, it's you got to have a show, but then two, what do you do with the yeah, show? What do you do with it? Yeah. Um, so with the radio, yeah, we had like four, four, three segments. The last segment always ended up being like our podcast-specific one. Um, and the way we would do that was i think we've talked about this camera before but it's what we're filming right now it's our mevo camera and it's pretty cool you can do up to nine angles in it and you can stream to facebook um, multiple channels um and yeah it's great that's how we go facebook live yeah um, so mevo it's m-e-v-o m is in mary e-v-o and it's a cool little camera it looks like uh it's like a little cylinder it looks like the original amazon alexa yeah and it's one single camera but what's really cool on the back end of it is you could preset nine different angles. So uh, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see this right now. If you're just listening, you're not gonna be able to see this, so I'll do my best to describe it. But uh, you could take this camera, it's set across, Thomas and I are at a table facing each other right now, and we could record multiple angles. So we could have one shot that's just locked in on Thomas's face. We could have one shot that's just locked in on my face. We could have one shot that's the entire room, right? If you had multiple guests, you could have a different shot for each person's face. And what it does is it gives the illusion that you have three, four, five, well, nine crew, cameras. Yeah. But in reality, it's one little camera the size of a, an original Amazon yeah. Alexa. And I'm just controlling it with my iPad. Yeah. So. And then on the other side, you have the iPad. And so on the iPad, you can um, it can auto switch. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's the most uh, accurate. But the way that the auto switching would work is if I start talking, it would switch to the angle of me. Thomas start talking, switch to the angle of him. Um, or if there was movement, what we started to find is like if I was fidgeting with a pen or something, it would like Zoom lock in. in on me in this pen when Thomas is talking. And, and so we went away from using the auto switching. But hey, if you're if you don't have somebody to, to manually do the switching for you, maybe you use the auto. It's better than nothing. So don't let that hold you back. Um, but Thomas is just over and just real quickly with taps of fingers can switch between which angle it's showing. And so it, it makes the show much more dynamic because if somebody's watching and it's just the same shot for 10 20 30 minutes it gets very very boring so the fact that you're getting multiple angles but you don't even have a camera crew you have one single little camera it costs a few hundred bucks uh, it's a killer killer way to go yeah um what was oh, the other part was so how what do we do with the audio um so we had our audio feed and recorded by our producer at the radio station while we were there um, then they would deliver us our audio file. Um, and then I would take that and I would add our intro to it. And that was just a generic song I found online. Um, and then the service, there's a ton out there that are free. Um, this one also has a free service. It's called Podbean. That's the um, like syndication uh, that we upload our podcast through. And then it pushes it out to all the other like um, iTunes, Spotify, and things like that. So it's just one place so you can do all the work and then it pushes it out to everywhere. Um, like I said, there's a free version. We have the like first step up, and the reason we like that is because you can schedule out your posts, um, so like we could get a backlog ahead of time and not like, do all the work up ahead, and then it just comes out. We're not always rushing. And that's Podbean, B-E-A-N, Podbean, um, and it's much like your listings, right? Whenever you put a listing onto the MLS, it automatically syndicates out to to Zillow, to Redfin, to all of these different sites. Podbean is effectively that for your podcast so that you can put it in one place, but then you can get it to a whole bunch of places when mm-hmm. it syndicates out. And then I know that there's some like approvals you have to go through, right? Yeah, so, some I mean, we're on Spotify, we're on Stitcher, we're on iHeartRadio, we're on all these things. It doesn't just automatically do that. You have to get approved for each of those. How does that work? Yeah. So the cool thing with like using Podbean or one of these sites that you have your, basically where it's hosting your uh, podcast, you get what's called an RSS feed. And uh, you take that RSS feed, and Podbean will have like a list of all the places your podcast can live. And it makes it super simple for you. And you just click it and be like, yeah, I want to be on iTunes. And then it, it takes you to the iTunes process of applying. It's literally, oh, upload your RSS feed. 
um, cool, we're going to review, you know, your description, you know, make sure, you know, you're not some weird thing. And then normally they get back to you in like three, three days to a week. Um, everyone's a little bit different. Uh, Spotify took us uh, like three weeks to hear back from them, but it is all just submitting like your, uh, I normally go iTunes first because that's where they go and look at for it, but yeah. Okay, and then there's the analytics on the back end too where you could see how many views you had. Can you see which platforms the views are coming from? Yeah, so it's really cool. With, I feel like we should be sponsored by Podbean. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's really hey, cool. Hey, Podbean, call us. Yeah, call us. Call us. We got uh, you. So yeah, it, it breaks it down. You can break it down by um, how well your episodes are being downloaded, where they've been downloaded from. Um, then it breaks down like countries, um, and then you can go into like states. Uh, so you can like super break down, okay, or um, what we've been trying to do a lot is the way we picked our uh, time for coming out is we would see, okay, when would we get the most downloads on which days? Okay, well, we seem to get downloads on this time. So instead of actually coming out this time, let's come out early. So it's like in people's feeds as they're like hitting the cars going to work on the days our episodes come out. So it's like really cool. You can get that nerdy with it and see, you know, times and where people are downloading and stuff. Yeah, and we've seen that with our listings too, where Redfin, who I think is the best aggregator of data when it comes to real estate, they've done some studies and they found that the two busiest search times of the week for buyers are not Saturday and Sunday. A lot of people think Saturday and Sunday, oh, that's everybody's working all week on the weekend. They, that's when they do their searching. No, that's when they go do their looking. They do their searching during the week between nine and five and specifically Thursday and Friday. Thursday and Friday, nine to five, are the two busiest search windows of the entire week. Well, we know that, right, Zillow, Redfin, all these websites, they're all algorithms. They're, they're search engines. There's an algorithm that determines the ranking, much like with podcasts. And if we know that Thursday and Friday are the busiest search days of the week, and we know that days on market is one of the biggest factors of their algorithms when they display the search results, shouldn't we have the lowest days on market on the days that are the highest search activity. Therefore, we intentionally like to go live on a Wednesday or a Thursday so that we're coming out at zero to one days on the market during the busiest search days of the week. Same thing with the podcast. If we know that we're getting a lot of downloads on specific days, well, when people are pulling up podcasts, when they load up everything that they're subscribed to, it's going to show the most recent podcast at the top of the list. Well, shouldn't we be at the top of the list? Therefore, it's smart about being strategic about when we actually post. Yeah. I love uh, that. I think that was pretty much the end of radio. And then you hit us up and wanted to actually do a podcast, like continuing it. And yeah, so we, we'll transition. Um, what we started running into with radio is just time constraints. Time, as you get busier and busier and you grow bigger and bigger company, time starts to become limited. And we started running into issues with time to where – it was a 20 minute drive to the studio. Then we were at the studio for what, an hour, hour. 15 minutes, mm -hmm. 20 minute drive back. That's effectively two hours. And it just became prohibitive to spend two hours every day. Now the relationships with guests is great. And there's the, the positive of the fact it's like a professional studio and there's a, a good feel when somebody comes into a studio, it, it elevates things. But we just started running into time constraints in all honesty. Yeah. I mean, that's why we stopped. If, it, if I had the time, I would still go do it um, because it was that valuable. Uh, when we were running it, we were on, I would say it was a top five AM channel. It wasn't, the, and now the disparity between like number five and number one is massive. <laughs> like the number one AM station would probably have a hundred times the viewership of the number five station. Um, but if you go to that number five station, it still has some credibility, which is important for your guest. Um, and we did it where we would buy airtime. So we would pay, I think we were paying like a thousand bucks a month for the airtime. Um, so you pay a thousand to have your own show. It's not like they're like, yeah. oh, you do a show because you're great. Like we paid a thousand dollars a month for the show, so it was two hundred and fifty bucks. They an episode for the studio time. That's it's like you hear about musicians and they they need studio time. time. Like that's effectively what it was. Yeah, because you have an engineer who's running. The yeah, because they the actually stuff, provided yeah. an engineer who ran the whole show. So uh, that was how we ran radio. But once we just we got to the point, it was taking too much time, too much resources to do it. We said, you know what, we're getting good traction with this podcast, let's just go straight podcast. And then the beauty, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see we're in our office. So now the commute that used to be 20 minutes each way is now 20 seconds to walk from my office to- the door behind him. Yeah, 20 seconds to walk from my desk to the table. Um, and so 
I'm able to get a lot of that time back. My time is extremely valuable. Um, and now I'm saving 20 minutes each way. That's 40 minutes of time. Plus, I don't have to be involved in like the setup and the prep. Everything is just good to go. I literally walk in. We shoot for 20, 30 minutes. I'm done. So now we went from two hours to like 20 to 30 minutes. Yep. Uh, so I could now do, what, six episodes in the amount of time it used to take me to do one. Mm-hmm. So it just becomes a time thing for sure. Yeah. Um, and we are getting, we know that there's not a lot of people actually listening to the radio show where we know how many people are listening to a podcast. Yeah. We could see how many downloads and all of that stuff. So, um, you know, marketing is math. And we know, like, we're getting certain amounts of, uh, you know, downloads. We know we're doing the right thing and we're growing the brand and all of that fun stuff. So we prefer the podcast route for time, convenience, everything. So the only difference is once you stop going in a studio, you now have to invest in equipment. Yep. Because when we were in the studio, we got to use all of their equipment. We just added the Mevo to go Facebook Live. But, again, that's a few hundred dollars. Um, you know, the radio station had tens of thousands of dollars of equipment. So now you're going to shoot your own podcast. You got to have your own equipment. So what did we go with and why? Yeah. So when we first started out, we were using the Mevo still. Um, and before we got these bad boys, we were using the Blue Yeti, which I Blue know Yeti you're marks, a super yeah. fan of. They're USB, just plug them straight in. Super easy to use, record the audio. Um, it, just, it gets the job done. Like put it between you and Brian and you would just talk into it. Um, the one thing I really liked about the Blue Yeti getting geeky about microphones um, it has different pickup patterns um, so these these microphones are called cardioid because their pickup pattern goes from the back and kind of loops back in and kind of dips down like this making I got a comment you gotta you gotta boost your mic or stay closer to it just as a, as a warning I'm sorry but like I said I'm normally behind the camera so <laughs> this is too much to do too, all I'm like hitting buttons and <laughs> messing with things sorry everybody um, and then the one thing I like about the Blue Bit Yeti, so it's cardioid, but you can also switch it to be, I can't remember the pickup pattern, but it's essentially um, like a, a circle. So you can Omnidirectional. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just sit in front of each other and talk in front of it. It's great. And they're pretty inexpensive, too. Yeah, Blue is the company, um, and then they make, the primary mic they make is a Yeti, and you pick those up for like 100 150 bucks. So Blue Yetis are awesome. Um, I use a Blue Yeti. And I like the Nano, which is a smaller version, because the regular Blue Yeti is huge. Mm -hmm. You put it on your desk, it takes up a lot of space. So they came out with a Nano recently, which is uh, significantly smaller. Um, But Blue, their original microphone was called a Snowball. Uh, It was a little round ball. And then they came out with the Yeti, and then most recently the Yeti Nano. So uh, any one of those would work. So we started out with the Blue Yetis, and then now we're running. Now we're running off of the Podcaster Pro. Um, So Switchboard has what essentially eight channels um and they run off these microphones that use xlr which is a cable type um and then yeah in here it's pretty cool you control levels of the mics you can control i don't know there's different noise filters actually built into the board um you record straight to the board you can take phone calls you can connect bluetooth um if you're like listening there's pre-programmed sound effects they can zoom in and zoom out um, it's a pretty nifty board all in one um, that I really like. Yeah, so the company that makes it is Rode, R-O-D-E. Uh, we're huge fans of Rode. We use a lot of Rode equipment for our microphones when we're shooting videos. I know we use the Rode Wireless Go yep. setup and their uh, lav mic system. Um, and Rode is known to be the kind of the originator of like the podcast-specific mixer. Like people traditionally have like used a, a mixer but it wasn't made for podcasting road was like the Big first to like say we're gonna make a board or a mixer that's specifically for podcast yeah um and there may be other stuff now but we have the road caster pro i was about to it's say the one that we use back when i was a, a voice talent oh. I, yeah, no, no. <laughs> I had a, a yamaha board and it was about this size but it was all these knobs and different condensers and things and you had to twist the knobs this makes it super easy and you just hit a button and you have a condenser on i love it um, we picked it up from Guitar Trader. They run promos a lot on Guitar Trader, um, guitartrader.com. I think we picked up the whole setup with the board, the mics, the mic stands, the cables for somewhere in a 1,000, 1,500 range for the whole setup. Yeah, um, it's worth it. Yeah, so definitely recommend checking that out. Cool. Well, I want to make sure that we respect everybody's time. Our goal with the show is always to deliver as much value as we can within 30 minutes. If you're getting value out of the show today, if you're listening on a podcast platform, if you could write a review for us on there, that would be awesome. If you're watching on YouTube, hit the thumbs up, hit the uh, subscribe button and the little notification bell. 
um, so that you can let YouTube and their algorithm know that we kick ass. And we're going to go to our Whistle Widget of the Week here in a minute, but before we do, uh, make sure to go to thewhistleway.com. You can always ask us questions on there um, where we'll answer them here on the show. You can also subscribe to the podcast, the YouTube channel, our referral network, and get discounted early bird pricing on our uh, video course called the Media Mayor Mastermind, which is teaching you everything we've learned about creating video over the last six plus years into a nice little package. Um, so the whistleway.com, you can get all of that on there. Thomas, as we wrap, we're going to go to whistle widget of the week. Mm -hmm. So this is something we utilize in our business. It either saves us time, makes us more money or helps us have more fun. What do you got for us? I'm excited because I don't have to do these often. So I still have a bunch of cool gadgets and widgets. Um, but keeping into the theme of starting your own podcast, I'm going to show off my, this device was what I first started using to record audio and sound in when I was in college making short films. Um, also what I used when I started producing podcasts for myself um, back in the day with friends. Um, so the item I'm using is it's an older model, but it's called a Tascam. Um, let's see if I can zoom in on myself so you can see it. Boom. And this cool little device is pretty much a all-in-one. So you can put in your SSD card um, and record audio to it. It has Omni mics. It has cardioid mics here at the top. So if you don't have any microphones, you can pick up sound there. Or what's really cool is you can take mics like these that we're using right now with XLR cables and plug them into the bottom. And then I have a little channels right here to record. Um, has playback, all this cool stuff. Um, but I think I got this for like a hundred bucks at the time. There's a newer model with better mics and stuff like that, but super awesome if you're looking to start a podcast and want to be mobile. You just pop this on the table. And on a budget. Yeah, and you're good yeah. to go. Awesome. Love that share. Uh, the one I have is not specific to real estate, but it helps me perform better as a real estate agent. Um, and this, whether you're into meditation or you have a crazy ass child like I do, um, I found this app that magically like puts my kid to sleep. Uh, it is called Calm, C-A-L-M. And it's full of these little like bedtime stories, lullabies, and there's also cool meditation stuff in there. But the Calm app, there's I put that on and my daughter just picks something and within five minutes, she's sleeping. Like, it's freaking magical. It's somebody who talks in this, like, calm, soothing voice. And they just make you feel so relaxed. And you just close your eyes and lay down. Like, it's that kind of stuff. It works amazing. And so, if you have a crazy-ass kid like I do, and your kid sleeps, then you perform much better as a real estate agent. So, therefore, it is related to real estate. Because yeah. it helps me have more fun. Interesting. And that is the Calm app. With that said, guys, Thomas, I appreciate you stepping up last minute. Uh, lots of good shares. So if you're thinking about getting a podcast rolling, um, you, just, you just got the lowdown on everything that you need. The Mevo, the Rode Podcaster Pro, you're dialed. Go yep. make it happen. Thanks. Also, oh, go ahead. I'm oh, sorry. I also wanted to say, if you are interested in podcasting, I know this is a future course that we're thinking about adding to our Media Bear Mastermind. In yeah. The future soon, so. We will add that. So that'll be on there too, thewhistleway.com. Thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of the Whistle Way Podcast. Wait, wait. Before you leave, I wanna share some more tips and tricks that we're using in our business to take it to that next level. Just click right here. And don't forget to subscribe, click right here.